Hey everyone, it's Ben from board to bits and this is the first video in our Saving Data in Unity series, and today we're going to be talking about player prefs. Player prefs are Unity's built-in solution for saving data in your games. Um, some of the pros of it is it is pre-baked, it's basically Unity's built it for you. Um, you just have to call the functions, and they're pretty easy to use. They're very straightforward, and they work a lot like a dictionary. If you're familiar with the idea of key value pairs, um, this is going to come like second nature to you. If not, we're going to go over that pretty quickly in the video, so you'll be familiar with it as well. Um, some of the cons, however, of player prefs, there are some restrictions to it. You can only save ints, floats, and strings, which if there's anything else you want to save, um, that you're going to have to find some sort of a solve for that. And you have to call each value one at a time. There isn't a way to conveniently call like an array of values. So you have to be aware of that before you start using player prefs for more complex games. Um, in addition, when you're saving to player prefs, you can only ever save to a single file. So if you're looking at trying to save like multiple game states, again, you need to find a solution for that, which will often involve creating multiple or many different names for your keys, which can get complex very quickly. Another thing, just to quickly note, this isn't necessarily a con, but if you're using uh, Unity for the web player platform, there is a limitation of a one megabyte size on the player prefs file, which still is quite a bit of room, but just be aware of that. So player prefs is really good for doing player settings. For example, if you have volume settings or graphics quality settings, things like that, that you want to just kind of save a quick, simple file, player prefs is a great space to do that. Um, likewise, uh, saving simple games, you just level, simple level progression or, you know, saving certain scores, that sort of idea. Actually, scoreboards are a really great use for player preps. You can have, you know, a few slots for names, a few slots for scores. Works perfectly. So, how do we use player prefs? Well, the player prefs is based on this player prefs namespace, which means that whenever you want to call it, you just type in player prefs dot and then whatever function you want. It's a static, uh, static class. You can call it from anywhere. So, let's look at some of the functions that it gives you. So to see some of the functions that player prefs gives you, we're going to go to Unity's website into their documentation. Now there is no documentation for player prefs in the manual, however if you go to the scripting API you can take a look there. Make sure that your settings are to your C Sharp preference, that's what we'll be scripting in today. And if you look here, the first part of the description shows where the, where Unity saves the player prefs file or I'm going to put file in quotes there because if you're on Windows it actually saves it to a bunch of registry um, insertions which is a little bit like you can't actually pull open your player prefs file on Windows. It, I've tried it and it does not work. Um, on Mac I believe it is basically a text file uh, but it's called a .plist file but I'm pretty sure you can open it up in like a text editor and kind of see what you're doing there. So first section just really tells you where these files are being saved, though you shouldn't really need to ever actually open the player prefs file. You can do every, all the control you need from um, Unity itself. Once we get down to the bottom though, we'll see the static functions. So these are all functions you can call from any other class that you have, and they are basically grouped into about five sections. The first ones are the sets. I'm actually going to go kind of out of order here. The sets, because these are what you're actually saving your uh, data to. You can save it to a float, an int, or a string. Um, the gets are just the opposite. You then get those, um, those that data that you've saved, and you can pull it into your game. Um, has key is a handy little tool for if you're trying to check, you know, maybe you haven't saved something or this is a new, new feature and you want to just double check that the player has an old save with that feature, you can use has key to check that a key exists. Um, delete all and delete key are pretty much what they sound like. You can delete any given value based on its key, or you can just delete everything and completely clear it, you know, back to factory settings. And then finally there is save. Save isn't hugely necessary because when you end your program it will, um, Unity will inherently save player prefs. However, if God forbid your program crashes, um, if you've used the save action it will um, save ahead of time so that you don't lose data. So maybe at certain checkpoints or um, when when a player specifically chooses to save their game, you might want to just run the mm -hmm. save function just to make sure that nothing will get lost in case something unexpected happens. So like I say, basically five kinds of functions, sets, gets, the has check, deletes, and save. Um, pretty straightforward. So the last thing we should talk about before we dive into Unity is how key value pairs work. So 
Key value pairs, like they say, have a key and a value. The value is what you want to save. For the case of player prefs, it's either the int, the float, or the string that you want to save into player prefs. The key is another string, but it's a special string because it's basically the address of your data. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tell Unity how to find your data. When you then call the get function, you say, here's this address, this string. Go look through player prefs until you find it, and then bring me whatever value is there. And that's really, that's how simple a key value pair is. That's how simple using uh, player prefs is. Whenever you save something, you're also going to save an address with it so that then Unity can find it later when you want to get that data. So let's jump into Unity and look at a completely new project I've created here. No scenes, no scripts, no anything. We're going to get player prefs working in about a minute. So let's start by creating a C-sharp script. And I'm going to call this just test. I'm going to add this to the main camera. You can add it to any game object you like. But we'll just, uh, come on, drop it on here. Do it the easy way. Okay. So now we'll open this up in Mono Develop. We've got our test script here. I'm going to delete the update function. We won't need that. And our start function, we're going to just say two quick things here. We're going to say player prefs dot prefs dot set int. And now we need our key. Um, if I do this here, you'll see the first thing you need is the key. So we'll just call this my first key. And the int value, let's say 42. So now, right now, once we've done this, if we hit the, if we started our program, we would immediately save the int 42 into player prefs with the address of my first key. And now what we can do is say player prefs dot get int my first key. Make sure you're spelling it the exact same way. And what this is going to do now is this will get that int for us. However, right now that's not actually going to do anything because we are returning the int value 42, but we're not doing anything with it. In order so that we can actually see something happen, we're going to quickly add a debug.log around this. And we're going to log my first key. And we're going to say to string just so that we make sure that it shows up properly. So setting the int into my first key as 42, and then we're just going to get that same int and log it to the console. So if we go back here, save, uh, I'll just call this test scene, double check that I saved that, yes, okay, we hit play and we should see 42 appear in our console. Oh, I maximized on play, but it does appear right down here, I can turn that off and we see yes, 42 has appeared, turn this off. So a couple of quick uh, tips when you're using um, player preps. Just because there, there can be a little bit of a gotcha here. You want, you notice when I was even typing this I actually had an accidental capital in here and that you want to avoid that at all costs. So it's usually a better idea instead of manually entering the key every time, have, if you know you're going to have a certain number of keys, maybe you have, you know, high score one, high score two, high score three, high score four, and then high score name one, two, three, and four. Instead of individually typing them every time, it's probably a better idea to add a um, add a variable. So just say string key equals my first key. So that that way, instead of having to write all this out, you can just type k e, and it'll eventually autofill for you. Okay, save, and again here now you'll see this works just the same way. 42 still appearing in our console. And obviously the other thing of this is that your chances are not going to be manually populating your values in either. You might, you know, have a, let's say, public int value. And then here, you can just put in value, save, and we hit play. Now it's a zero because if we go to our value script, we see that we have zero there. If we change that value to 60, play, comes up as 60. So like I say, this is a very simple 
simple system for saving data. Um, you can do the same exact thing that I'm doing here with the int. You can do that with a float or a string. If you wanted to use any other kind of data, you probably want to use one of the other saving methods. However, you can, if you wanted to, say, take a vector 3 and save it into three individual floats but that's entirely your decision. I would probably recommend though using um, either a database solution or possibly, um, possibly serialized objects. But we'll be getting into those in future videos. So until next time, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.